There's some pens that you get that you absolutely adore, and if you had to restart your collection, you would definitely get them again. But they can't all be winners. And there's some pens that you get over time that maybe you regret buying them, or they're just so terrible they make you angry. So today I'm going to go through the, the gamut of some pens that are good pens, but just not for me. Some are sort of in that maybe category if a fault or two were just fixed. And then there'll be some other ones that I call just the total trash pens. So let's go through them. Maybe one of your pens that you love is in the trash pen category. We'll find out. Stay tuned today on Doodle Bud. First batch of pens I'm going to call nothing wrong with them, but just not for me. So there's seven in total. I was kind of surprised when I went through this. So let's open the box and see which one I'm going to pull out of here first. In no particular order, we have the Kaveco Sport. I totally get it. The functionality, they're kind of cute, reasonably well made. The pricing is good. You go from a small pen to a big pen, very portable pocket pen, lots of nib sizes. You know, I think it looks all right, but just dimensionally, it's just that extra little bit too small for me. It is also quite light. I did actually just try out, I went to the to our first in-person meeting uh, for the Vancouver Pen Club Maya Furlong, the uh, the head of the pen club there, she has the version in the stainless steel, their steel one. And that one, I actually, I liked quite a bit. But the standard plastic sport, nothing wrong with it. Just not for me. Feeling around here, I'll just go in order here. What do we got? Oh, I know this one. This might upset a lot of people. Twisby Eco. I know. First piston filler pen I got. First piston filler for lots of people. Um, they're very collectible, all sorts of colors and all that stuff. Works well, comes with grease and a wrench. How nice is that? I use that grease all the time. But for whatever reason, I just don't use it a bunch. Huge, you know, you got the ink window, holds lots of ink. All sorts of great things going on. Um, this particular one, I found the, uh, the nib actually kind of just creeps forward a little bit. I got to push it back in from time to time. My other one that I have, I bought another one. Uh, with a stub nib that was my first stub nib doesn't do that but uh yeah i just find myself not going for this anymore maybe because i don't know do you mature over the course of your pen journey and you just you kind of move on from these but i know some that just they've been around a while and they absolutely love the twisby ecos but just yeah not for me i think construction and price point are pretty good i know there's that the whole cracking thing it's i don't know it comes and goes one if i were to guess uh, a main cause of it is a bit of an over tightening i think it just has to do with like i i don't like that just that feel there's no positive sort of feedback that you've tightened it enough and you can't tighten it anymore so the uh the thread stop that's way down there in the cap and the o-ring sort of action i i think there, they could be a little bit improvement that's my guess anyways i don't know if if in fact that's the cause of the mysterious cracking issue but um I think this pen is a little bit easy to over tighten. So if you do have one of these, just a little more gentle on it. I, I find this is a little too easy to over tighten. Let's try pulling one out from the other side. Let's, oh, I know I can tell because it's it's so smooth. This is a pretty pen. This is my Live In You pen. So this was a Christmas gift my wife got me, but I I picked out for myself. She says, it's just, just I don't want it to get you. I know it's going to be a pen, so pick one out. So I picked out this pen. One of my first, like, actually my first and only uh, pretty resin pen where I bought it because it looks pretty and just has, you know, sort of those same type of internals. This has uh, Schmidt components. Works well. Nothing wrong with it. Looks really pretty. All that stuff. Um, I think for the price point, kind of reasonable. Some resin pens I find are just astronomical and has similar bits and construction. So I thought this was uh, a reasonable exchange for it. But yeah, looks really nice. Works well. I think the size is good, all that kind of stuff. It even comes with a little pen rest pen holder there. Focus is starting to go. I don't know what's going on here. There we go. Um, but again, yeah, just not for me. Put the tripod down. Let's try freehand in it. What do we got over here? Oh, yeah, I know what this is. Pilot Metropolitan. Again, super popular pen. Nice clip. Good construction. It's made by Pilot. Very good company. The uh, snap action on that lids really well. It posts quite nicely. This has like a little cursive italic uh, nib that's on there. And it writes really well. The nib isn't the smoothest. I would smooth this a little bit myself. 
Um, but yeah, you know, cartridge converter pen, pricing's good, all sorts of cool colors, all that stuff was quite nice. Um, I know there's a bit of a step down that some people could get annoyed by that. It doesn't really bother me. It's not like the most comfortable in the world, but again, I can't really knock it. There's nothing wrong with it. I keep it just really to have it handy as size comparisons for the channel now and all that kind of stuff, but I just don't find myself going for this pen, but I know a lot of people love them. Uh, I don't love it so much. What else I'm going to get here? There's two left in here for now. There's going to be a surprise one at the end. And what is this? Oh, I know what this is. So this is a vintage pen. This was my first vintage pen. And this is going to... There's one of the viewers. He loves these. I don't blame him. But this is in vintage Estabrook J-Series. This is from like the 1940s. I mean, look at the color on that. That is really nice. Uh, ben Walsh actually used this as inspiration for his first pen, the Gravitas Entry. So, uh, <laughs> he loves it too. You know, it posts on there. It's got quadruple start threads that are on there. Again, tons of nib options. I think you even get some flexi ones. This is a stock oblique broad nib right from the factory. So, pen's in great shape. All that good stuff. Um, but for whatever reason, I just don't ever find myself going for it and use it i don't know what it is about it but uh yeah i can't there's nothing wrong with the pen i really don't think there's anything wrong with it whatsoever but i just don't use it and uh i, I probably won't buy another one for whatever reason it's just not for me despite it checking a lot of boxes okay last pen let's just flip it open yeah. <laughs> again this might upset a lot of people but this is my leonardo this is the Memento Zero in blue Hawaii. This is the regular size, and and when I f this was on sale, so I think that's why I got it. I got it from Pen Chalet. Th these just came out. The color is so gorgeous, and there was a big sale on. I think also I had a coupon code, so the 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 numbers are just lined up, and these were super popular, getting rave reviews. So I got one. Um, I, I didn't find out till later on they have a grande size. I should have gone with that. So I think that's just sort of it. It's just kind of the wrong, not that it's too small. I have other pens that's a similar size that I use, but I don't know what it is. I just don't use it a bunch. I would like to get another Leonardo pen at another time. Uh, I think probably a piston filler, probably, you know, they're, they're not cheap either, those other ones. This one was very economical. So I, <laughs> the pricing was great on this, but um yeah, I just, I don't go for it. it I even upgraded. Um, I got the 1.1 stub nib as well. This originally came with a fine. I still have that, but their stub nibs are really good. And this was mega affordable when I got it. Um, one little knock I have on this one, and I mentioned it in my review. One of my first reviews, if you dare watch how, how bad it was way back when I first started my first review. But this makes me cringe. I only ever take the blind cap off just to show people don't take the blind cap off. These threads are just very sharp on here for going into this material. And you can see the dust. You can see the residue. It does have a thread stop, so it's going to stop it from over threading. But I, just, I can feel the pain in the material every time it goes down those threads. So that's one thing I... Yeah, give me an update. If you got newer ones, let me know how that thread is doing. If it's chewing away at your stuff, and if it still is, I would just recommend, you know, fill in the pen like this, pop it open and do it. But yeah, they even got the extender so you can get to there. Uh, nice cartridge converter. You all know probably about Leonardo pens are quite well. This one screws in and it's nice. You know, it's screw in. I'm a little dodgy in those sometimes, but it's going into a soft material as well. So you don't have to worry about it uh, stripping out all that stuff as well but super beautiful pen if you catch this thing in the sunlight just right uh this pen just shines and there's lots of of depth and i guess uh chatoyance to the pen material as well but yeah i don't know man i just don't i don't love it and uh yeah if i didn't have it i wouldn't i wouldn't miss it so that was the uh, nothing really wrong with them, just not for me batch. And there's one more at the end I'll show you. I excluded for now. Now this, I got my pen cases mixed up at the intro, but this is the, uh, I really want to like them, but there's, the, all these pens, there's four of them, have one common thing that, that really annoys me, uh, that where I might not buy them again. But let's go through it. Let's pop it open and go through these ones.
I didn't clip the pens, so they're kind of hiding. You can just see the very tops of them. So <laughs> anyways, first up, ooh, so shiny and chrome, and, uh, is this is the Faber-Castell Ondoro. This is the smoked oak. This is my only pen I have that has any wood on it. Um, really beautiful pen. I mean, the, the fingerprints, that's another thing for people that drives it nuts, that, that obviously this wouldn't be for you in, in any of the materials. comes in plastics as well. That doesn't really bother me. But um, one little thing with it, it is a little bit sharp when I hold it with the wood. I don't know if maybe you, you don't get that as much with the plastic. It's not absolutely terrible, but that does, um, yeah, it's not the most comfortable pen in the world, but that's not the deal breaker. Um, post in it, it's, it is back heavy, but for me, the way I write, I just shunk it in there and it's no problems whatsoever. So that's not a problem for me. I think the clip is great. The nib is fantastic. Like... I find Faber-Castell nibs are probably some of the best steel nibs you can get out of the box. Uh, you know, this is my Faber-Castell Emotion in that stealth black. I love this pen. This was in my Applebaum top three pens. I would, I don't know if it's still in the top three, but I would get one again if I lost it. That's how much I enjoy it. And the nib is spectacular on there as well. Um, the part, there's another little nitpick I have is the alignment. So the flat of the nib doesn't line up with the flats on here. So you just sort of want to, uh, you know, have the flat on the cap with the clip slide down and go into that flat, but then the nib is rotated off just a little bit. Man, the focus is terrible tonight. Sorry about this. But the one thing I do find with it is there's a little bit of a nib dry out that goes on. So if you use it, you know, daily all the time, I don't have that issue, but I like to rotate my pens and it does every now and then hard start especially if, like maybe it's been a week or something it can hard start a little bit there too but that is uh probably the the biggest gripe i have with this pen and these pens all have a little bit of that issue some are worse than others but yeah that's about the main thing like i said the other stuff is secondary you know if you go to put the cap on and line it with the nib it, it's off a bit so you gotta sort of rotate so that's a little tiny detail but the nib dry out it's just kind of annoying. The next pen in the list is a Visconti. So a uh, high-end brand, but this was, they're not, this isn't now their, their lowest entry point, but I think at the time I bought the pen, it, it was. But this is the Rembrandt, and this is, I can't remember if it's blue azure or azure blue, something like that. Again, this is one of those things where there was this, you know, super deal going on at Pen Chalet, mega discounts, there's only limited number left, so the price was low, and I Again, I think I had another coupon, like a discount code for an extra 10%. So I I could have said no, but I didn't. Uh, magnetic clip, which is cool. Nice, uh, sorry, magnetic cap, I should say. Nice looking clip. It's just a gorgeous looking pen. Posts quite well. Very comfortable. This nib is actually mega smooth. Like it for a steel nib, this is one of my smoothest. It's a fine. It writes like a medium um, it's quite wide, but it has some lovely bounce. You can squeeze a nice little, little little bit of line variation out of it. One thing that annoys me, though, is the capping. So just how they did this profile here on the collar and then the capping mechanism there in the nib, the magnetic part, it catches a little bit. If, if you drive it in there, it's fine. But if you go to put it on light, it'll just sort of catch and then it's, it's not on there. You got to like wiggle it and then it goes home that's a little bit annoying but also too the ceiling isn't great it it does yeah it does dry out on me so sometimes i'll go to use it and again daily writing no problem the focus today is a problem there we go um but if you know you, you don't use it for a week or something like that which isn't crazy it dries out as well oh another thing uh this cap band fell off after I guess maybe it was a year. That was really ridiculous. I looked at the parts and they just, they didn't surface prep this at all. It was totally smooth on the inside. And so you have super smooth and shiny and they glue it on to here that was pretty smooth and shiny, the, the material. And of course it fell off. So I was like, what is going on? So sanded this on the inside a bit, sanded that little two-part epoxy, lined everything up. And now that's on there nice and tight. But yeah, that was kind of annoying as well. But that was an easy fix at least. This one might annoy some people because uh, it's a very popular pen. My Diplomat Arrow. Look how beautiful this pen is. It is exceptionally well made. There's all sorts of things about it. It's such a satisfying clipping, you know, capping mechanism. It's great. Uh, extra fine nib. 
very extra fine, like a nice extra fine point. The nib looks beautiful. It's pretty darn smooth for an extra fine. The thing I don't like about it is the section. It's quite slick, I find, at least for my hands. For your hands, it might be fine. Um, everyone I, I hear talk about these pens, you know, the nibs are great and they are, they, they're absolutely lovely, which is a huge part to a pen and styling all that stuff. I think it's, it's so well made, but I keep sliding down on this one. It's a little bit too slick for me, but also again, this, despite the beautiful capping mechanism, I do find this one, the ceiling isn't the best. I don't know if that's just a me problem. Um, let me know if you're big into these and you use them fairly often. If you have any problems with sort of hard starting, if it hasn't been used for a week or whatever. Uh, so maybe that's just a one-off on my end, but even if that was, was perfect, cause I do get some hard starting if it hasn't been used super, super regularly, the, uh, still just the section is a deal breaker. I still might almost buy one again, just to look at it. Cause it's so pretty, but, uh, yeah, I don't know the jury's out on whether I would get that pen again. And lastly, this is a pen I so want to love and I absolutely do love it. This is my Montegrappa Elmo. I got this from Goulet. I think this is the their own kind of color scheme. They got the Chrysocola. Even came with a beautiful little uh, pen. Where is it here? Uh, here is a two pen case. It came, it was a deal. It was on sale. Same thing. The sales, I always get you know done by those ones, but beautiful pen case that came with it really well made too. The pen is just beautiful. It's super comfortable. I like the threads. There is a step down, but it's not uncomfortable. Cool thread profile. The resin is great. It's, it's, it has a really nice feeling in the hand. Almost, it's not like ebonite, but kind of has that. Like, I don't know, I just absolutely love it. The posting is secure. It doesn't back weight it. It's, I love the feel of this pen. The nib was pretty bad when I got it, quite scratchy. The tines were too tight, so it was very dry, hard started. I put some work into it and got it fixed. It's a fine, so I don't expect the smoothest, but this was pretty bad for a fine. I didn't send it back because I could tune it and tweak it myself, and I did. So I'm very happy with how it writes now. The flow is spot on. Look how beautiful the work is on that nib. Like. That is just such a uh, beautiful work on there. I think this looks absolutely great. Sorry if I bumped the tripod there. But again, the Achilles heel for this pen is the dry out. I don't know, again, if you have one of these, if you can let us know in the comments. If I use this pen every day or every other day, I don't have a problem. But again, I do, you know, usually have six or seven pens with me at all times that I kind of work through and change and maybe I go a little long without using this one but it hard starts and it takes a bit for it to go and get the flow in again so it'll skip a bit too so if you're using it on the reg it's great um, but yeah if you're not it doesn't take very long for this to dry out and it drives me absolutely bonkers because it's beautiful it feels great in the hand I think the construction is good the nib sucked out of the box, but I got that fixed. One uh, thing I don't like that I think is a design flaw is the screw and converter. So we saw that wherever it is, uh, Leonardo Memento Zero, they got a screw and converter, but it's plastic going into this plastic as well, like so soft into soft. But on theirs, um, it goes in. Oh, I just, I can feel it. It just wants to cross thread and get stripped. It goes into this piece here. And so the thread, the thread's going in there. They're pretty aggressive. And same thing as you saw that happened on the blind cap of the Memento Zero. You know, the plastic gets chewed up because it's going into steel. Same thing is happening here too. And you can just feel when you first go to thread, like you got to watch it. Like it naturally just wants to cross thread but then when you go you you screw it down and I can just it gets tighter and tighter and I'm not you know I'm not confident that's all the way down but I also don't want to over overturn it and strip it and blow it out because then I think this converter would rattle quite a bit so I could just be overly cautious let me know if you've had troubles with yours if that does strip over time or, you know, just stop being a baby doodle bud and move on with it. But, um, yeah, I absolutely love this pen. Uh, I don't want to give up on it. I think I just have to use it more and that's the fix. But 
the dry out on the on the cap like pen makers fix this stop it you're killing your pens by having them dry out way too soon and lastly we got the just the trash pens trash these are just pens. absolute garbage so uh let's get to it first up is this moon man i can't even remember the model number because i don't even care uh i just hate this pen <laughs> And you can hear how disgruntled I am. I think it's like an M8 or something. I'll, I'll try to put information in the description. But yeah, you can just... I refer to this pen. I just keep it to talk about how bad a pen can get. That's all there is to it. It's delaminating. Threads are bad. You can see gaps. Like, that is the here inside. Like, what are you doing? Like, that is just so bad that you can see that. And yeah, the pen's just delaminating. The threads have stripped out in the cap. There's uh, the first bit of the thread just got yanked right out because you don't run... Oh, the focus. This is... What's worse, the focus or the pen? God. Um, you don't run your thread all the way to the end of the cap, especially on plastic like this, because they get ripped out. Like, how... Oh, just design flaw number one on top of every other thing wrong with this pen. So, And then, uh, yeah, the old... We call this in the shop... When you thread a hole or something like what type of tolerance or clearance, this is called the rattle and piss fit uh, in technical terms. Just garbage threads. Uh, the plating's bad. Look at the nib. I, I've barely used this pen and the plating is coming off of this this nib already. So uh, yeah, and the, even how this is epoxied in here, how that's glued in, you can see the tool chatter is extreme on there and this part is put in and it's glued crookedly. So even like when you put it together, the cap isn't aligned with the body, which drives me nuts. And this isn't cheap. I Like if this was five bucks, okay. And this is the most you should pay for this pen, but I think it was like 30 or even 40. So bad value, bad pen. This is a trash pen. And if you have one and you love it, I'm not going to apologize. I think it's terrible. So that's, it is, it, it is what it is. Okay. Next up, equally bad, this Conklin stylograph that just, yeah, talk about threads getting stripped. And I'm, I'm careful with my threads. I understand not stripping things, but this just did it on its own because they have a terrible uh, thread profile on there. If we can get some type of zoom and focus going on, but mega sharp threads. And you're supposed to have three threads in contact. They only got two. So that's wrong. And uh, you're going into this mega thin, mega soft and supple material. And then, and there's no thread stop, really. Like there's no positive thread stop. The thread stop is the threads. And if you just keep going, you use... <laughs> when you design a pen, you got to have it. Either the cap's going to stop here somewhere or the end of the section will have a thread stop down there. They did neither. So these threads uh, just strip like crazy. The step down, I can't stand. Um, whatever as far as section and all that, that's, that's your own choice. Um, like the material's kind of cool and all that stuff. The, the, you know, the clip is okay, whatever. The nib and feed were garbage. Uh, I went through two, uh, went through the original nib and feed. Um, I did, I... I got a replacement one right away that sucked equally bad. So then I tried, Oh, let me get another one. So I bought this one it sucked as well. Like it just, the ink delivery system on here is really bad. Is this a screw in converter too? Or is it? Oh, that's screw in. And uh, same terrible idea there. The, you know, threads, soft plastic going into hard steel. So yep. Garbage. Next up. This uh, Lambitu, the total knockoff of the Curry Dust. Man, the focus. I know. I'm going to throw this phone across the room here quick. This thing is, yeah, again, just total trash. I think I was too kind on the review that I, I tried to give it some redeeming things. Like it looks like a Curry Dust and it clicks. This nib is the world record holder for fastest dry out and largest ink booger the i this maybe it's just the ink i got but man it just grows some gnarly ones on there and it also dries out so fast and just the assembly of it 
the th how I had to like, well, I guess that fell out, whatever. Um, I had to like kind of sand and file some of the parts for them to even sort of stop from binding all the time because the finish was so bad and there were so many burrs. I had to try to, it was just catching like out of the gate. So I had to repair the pen, a brand new pen for it to even function properly. And even when I did that, I couldn't overcome the terrible, yeah, you know, like see it, yeah, just bad motion, just really garbage. Um, yeah, it's still, no matter what I did, it doesn't overcome the terrible ceiling that this pen has. And it is just the most epic dry out pen I've ever had. It, and this is in stark contrast. I don't have it handy or pull it out. The, uh, the Mahjong A1 for their clicker pen. Man, that thing works really good. I know that's a knockoff too, but that thing works really well. This trash. Trash. Pen. And lastly, I can't even remember the model number. I'll try to put it in there again. Looks cool. I've heard some people say they really like it. I, I actually, I got to give it some, uh, some kudos. I strapped this to the windshield of my car and took it through a car wash just for uh, some fun. I might be onto something. Oh, that's drying it pretty quick. Um, the only problem with this one, the, the nib's a bit scratchy. But dry out is really bad. This I I I like the feel of it. This I think is a bit of a knockoff sort of again and just some design cues I should say that are I think taken from one of the Faber Castell sort of entry model pens a little bit with the clip and some stuff. So it's actually quite comfortable. the The capping and posting is is quite well. Um, but this one again, it's dry out that is sort of the death of it. And for me, it's like really, really, really frequent. It's not as bad as this piece of junk, but it's pretty bad. And for me, it just sort of makes it unusable. I've heard some people say it's really great. Again, maybe there's something wrong with mine or there's the inks I've chosen. Let me know in the comments if these have been performing really well for you. Again, maybe it's just a daily writer thing. You just have to use it all the time, but um, it's really, a, it's super cheap. I can't remember how much this is, two or three. And the construction and stuff is actually reasonable. But the nib dry out for me is so aggressive on this, it, it makes the pen unusable. So, again, they can't all be winners. Um, but let's, let's finish off. There's one pen left. And it's a little bit of sadness, but I'll, I'll show you what it is. <laughs> all the pens um, that, I, you know... Again, there's this is in that category of nothing wrong with it, just not for me. Is this vintage OMAS 556 faceted with a phenomenal flex nib like this thing? Uh, I had this on my flex nib comparison, just keeps up beautiful response on it. They don't make them like they used to, and you can definitely say that with this pen. Um, lovely writer. There is not a thing wrong with the pen functionally at all whatsoever. Maybe it's a bit bland just because it's black. But uh, yeah, if you want to get those special celluloids, be prepared to, prepare to pay a lot more money. So, but yeah, I just, I don't know. Maybe I thought it was going to be more than it is. is what it's, I, I just, I don't know. I'm not overly excited about the pen. And I think it's because there's another OMAS pen that I really, really want. And I, I, until I get that one, no other OMAS pen really matters. And that is a 360, and especially in wild celluloid. So that pen for me, I think, maybe I got this one because I just, I can't swallow the price tag on the pen I really want. So this was like, let's get into the OMAS brand and get a beautiful flexi one. And maybe that will soothe my craving, my craving for the pen I really want. And it hasn't. So... At some point, I don't think now, but at some point I will probably sell this pen. It is in phenomenal condition. It works exceptionally well. I got this from, from 10 pen. Uh, her pens are, are absolutely fantastic. So probably at some point prepare to see this one up for sale. Um, and it's because the proceeds will go towards me putting money away over years, squirreling away. So one day I can get that 360, especially if I can get wild celluloid, especially if I can get a fine nib, um, which is the pen I really, really want to have. So again, nothing wrong with it, but just 
I think it's in that not for me category. Like I said at the start, we all have pen regrets and they can't all be winners. And in some case, they are extreme losers. But, uh, and there's somewhere, you know, not all hope is lost. As soon as I finished shooting the clips for this pen, I immediately put some ink in it and I'm going to take it with me tomorrow. It's going to be my two pen case and uh, use it as a daily writer. So I thought I would end on a positive, positive being this is a pen that I absolutely adore. Yes, yes, yes. A hundred times I would get one again. My Mont Blanc 149 won because I got a sweet deal. Don't know if I could find that deal again. But also it's got that curse of italic grind DIY. Did it myself. Look how well that thing writes. Just absolutely lovely. I got this new ink in there too. I think that's a nice pairing. A nice, uh, this is the Monteverde Azure Noir. So it's like a gray ink, but it's got some nice shading. Nice color, not overly saturated. I like the looks of that. So I thought we should end on a positive and leave it there. Thanks for everyone who's been watching, commenting, sub subscribing. And for those who haven't hit subscribe, come on, damn it, just hit the stupid button already. All right, we'll catch you next time.